deserted. That was Fleet Street on May Day. The buzzing hub of the newspaper world had come to a silent halt. For in the Fleet Street area, as in many other parts of the country, May Day was strike day. The street of papers, and not a newspaper in sight. On the newsstands, it was magazines only. This was the scene as the strike, aimed against Mrs. Barbara Castle's white paper on union reform, in place of strife, began to take its toll. The newspaper workers, members of the Society of Graphical and Allied Trades, marched towards Tower Hill to join other unions in protest. London docks had the same forlorn look as Fleet Street. Machines without men. The dockers, too, were on the march, and as they marched, the May Day stoppage tightened on Britain's industry. It was estimated that 200,000 workers throughout Britain had come out against the anti-strike legislation, many of them unofficially. So, for some, it was an unofficial strike against a white paper that resolves to curb unofficial strikes. Here, indeed, was an anomaly. At Tower Hill, the strikers massed, brandishing their banners. Their urge, tear up the white paper. The strikers say they have a genuine grievance. The proposed industrial relations bill will, they say, cripple the union's freedom. But all over the country, industry was paralyzed. Their strike was Britain's loss. 